Hello, and welcome to Physics 112. Uh, the formal title for this course is Algebra-Based Physics with Lab Number 2, um, but really, in short, this is electricity and magnetism. Most of you uh, know me already from Physics 111, um, but a couple of you are going to be new faces for me this semester. Uh, my name is Dr. David Atley. Um, I will be your instructor this term. You can call me Dr. David, Dr. Atley, Professor David, Professor Atley, any of those is fine. Um, so over the next, I'm going to call it half an hour or so, I'm going to be reviewing the policies and procedures for how the course is going to run this term. Uh, that's going to sound familiar to a lot of you because it's going to be pretty much like Physics 111, but again, um, some of you are new faces, uh, so I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. We'll start by talking about the COVID-19 mitigation policies that are going to be in place this term. Um, and do please pay careful attention as some of this is different from the last semester. Um, as the Omicron variant is spiking across the United States, the policies that CCA has put in place to respond to that are shifting accordingly. So please make sure that you're keeping up and regularly checking in to make sure that you're understanding how those policies are changing. Uh, there's a link across the bottom of the slide to CCA's uh, COVID-19 mitigation page. Uh, if you're watching this, Prior to the beginning of term, uh, these slides will not be available yet because the D2L shell won't have opened. But if you want to check on the COVID policies before term starts, you can go to ccaurora.edu slash coronavirus, um, and that's where all of the most recent policies are available. Uh, so let me just quickly summarize what's going on this term. Uh, first, Masks continue to be required in all indoor public spaces, regardless of vaccination status. Um, so if you have one jab, if you've got two, if you're boosted, if you're unvaccinated, everybody has to wear a mask. Because the Omicron variant is so much more contagious than the Delta variant, it's important to make sure that we're all doing our absolute best to prevent the spread of coronavirus within the CCA community. First, unlike previous semesters, cloth masks are now out. So the college is requiring that everyone wear either a disposable surgical mask or even better, a KN95 mask. It's also important to make sure that your mask is covering both your nose and your mouth and that you have the best possible seal around your face. At this point, I'd hope that we all know how to put on a mask properly, but let's just review some basics really quickly. I'm going to take my mask, I'm going to apply it to my face using the ear loops. I'm going to stretch out the mask to cover my entire face from my nose to my chin. And you'll notice that when I put it on, I squeezed this metal nose piece so that the mask is fitting tightly across the top of my face. This gives a good seal and limits the amount of puffery that happens around the outside of my mask instead of having my in-breath and out-breath go through the mask itself. Doing this also makes it less likely that my, mouth, that my mask is going to slip off of my nose as I'm talking. Um, so it makes it easier to keep my face properly covered and it means that I won't have to touch my mask as much or fidget with it to keep it in place. As you're wearing your mask, try to avoid touching the outside of your mask. And then once you're ready to take your mask off, remove it using the ear loops and dispose of it using a proper trash container. Also new this term is a vaccination and testing requirement. So you must either submit proof that you're fully vaccinated or Submit weekly testing results showing that you're negative for COVID-19 in order to stay in class. Um, so if at all possible, if you can, please get vaccinated. I assume most of you already are. Um, if you're eligible, get the booster. Um, just do whatever you can in order to best protect yourself and our community. Okay, so thanks for that. I'll get off my horse now. 
and let's talk about what you can expect in physics class this semester. Um, so we're going to be looking at critical thinking, analytic reasoning, problem solving. Um, so how do you take principles that we learn and apply them to new situations? How can you break down complex problems into manageable pieces? All of these are important both for physics but also for your other science disciplines, which for most of you is going to be where your focus is. Um, so if you're in a biology or a chemistry lab and you're trying to conduct an experiment and analyze the results, you'll break that down into individual manageable pieces that you can, uh, you can know how to solve. And then that's kind of the same thing that we'll be doing in a lot of the problems that will show up in this class. Um, we'll look at how electricity and magnetism work, how they have important contributions for modern life, um, and generally look at the foundations for the modern world. Um, so you'll, by the end of the semester, you'll be familiar with a lot of the foundations for the modern electrical grid, for example. Um, you can start to see how different pieces fit together. Um, we're not going to talk about failure points because that's more of a systems engineering issue, uh, but at least the basic pieces, you'll have a much bigger appreciation for how they work and why they're important. Uh, as we work through the semester, you'll be doing a number of things. Most of these are related to electricity and magnetism, as promised. Um, we'll start out talking just briefly about error analysis, and that's going to come back um, as you work through the labs this term. Um, we'll talk about electric charges and electric fields, how electricity connects to magnetism, because they're actually like, really tightly related. Um, we'll, we'll start analyzing some simple and even some slightly more complex circuits. And then at the end of the semester, we'll finish up by talking about electric, electromagnetic radiation, which is sometimes also called light, and do some brief introduction to geometric optics. Um, so how glasses work, how your eyes work, things like that. Um, so that's the plan for the term. Let's look now at how the class is actually going to operate, how your grades will be assigned, how I'm going to run the classroom from day to day. Uh, once again, there's a complete syllabus available to you on D2L. Um, there's a snapshot of the color-coded version of the course schedule on the left-hand side of your screen. Those color codings, once again, continue to refer to different parts of the course, so labs versus homework state, dates and stuff. I've also put together this term a printer-friendly version of that schedule, which is color-coded in grayscale, um, so different colors of gray assigned to different types of material. Um, so if you want to print out the syllabus and keep that schedule with you, use that printer-friendly version. Um, it's going to highlight different parts and different due dates better than if you just try and print out the color version on a black and white printer. Um, that doesn't tend to work very well. Okay, so how does your grade get assigned? How am I going to assign you a course grade at the end of the semester? And for those of you who had me for 111, it's exactly the same. Um, it's a combination of your daily attendance in class, so just show up and you get credit for it, um, your daily quizzes, your labs, your homeworks. Uh, there's a formal lab again this semester, uh, three midterms, and then a cumulative final exam that will be administered in class on the last day. Uh, we'll be using the OpenStax College Physics textbook again. Um, for those of you who I haven't had, which is not most of you. Um, this is a free textbook that you can read either online from the publisher's website. You can in, it is embedded in the D2L shell. Um, and either of those locations, you can do annotations. So you can highlight the text. You can add notes to yourself. You can also get an ebook version of the textbook that you can import into your Kindle or other um, ebook reader. You can get a PDF that you can carry around if you want to have a PDF. Um, so there's a bunch of options for you to read the textbook for free. Um, you can also buy it from the bookstore if you feel so inclined. I don't necessarily encourage that um, just because it's a big heavy textbook and you'll only be needing part of it. Um, so. All of those perfectly valid options. 
Because this is a lab class and we'll be doing lots of instruction in person um, where we work through example problems and I see how you're doing and give you feedback and all of that, attendance during class is really key. Um, so I want you all to be attending class every day if you can. But I do realize that life can sometimes happen. Um, so each of you in, is entitled to two excused absences with basically no muss, no fuss. Just tell me, hey, Professor Atley, I'm not going to be in class on this day and I'll excuse you, and that'll be that. Um, <clears throat> if you can let me know that ahead of time, that's optimal. Um, if you have an emergency that comes up, like your car gets stuck in the snow, or you get into a car accident and have to go to the emergency room, and let's hope neither of those things happen, but if they do, take care of yourself first. You know, Let me know when you can. Especially like your car stuck in the snow, just shoot me a quick email, even if it's like during class time, that's fine. Um, if you're having a medical issue, if you're sick or you need to go to the emergency room or anything, take care of yourself. Let me know afterwards, that's fine. Um, chances are if you have to see a doctor, they're going to give you some kind of paperwork. Just show it to me when you come back and that'll be that. Um, Beyond those first two absences, um, I will still usually excuse absences as long as you don't approve, uh, as long as you don't abuse the privilege. Um, just kind of let me know, like, I need to be out and here's why, or I'm sorry, I had to miss class because my kid was sick or whatever. Um, so do your best to communicate with me, meet me halfway, and I will, for the most part, be able to accommodate you. Just don't abuse the privilege and make sure that you're maintaining communication so I know what's going on. Uh, if you miss a lab during an excused absence, those labs must be made up. This is new this semester. Um, so this is an alteration from my policy for how I ran 111. So if you miss a lab, you need to make it up. And let's try to make those up as quickly as possible. Um, the lab dates are synced with the course material so that you're doing something in lab that's reinforcing what you're learning in the like regular lecture class. So the longer you wait to make up the lab, the less beneficial it will be for you as a learner. Um, so in addition to just coming to class, um, it's also going to behoove you to do some preparation ahead of time. Uh, that includes reading the assigned material from the textbook prior to class so that you're ready for the quiz. Um, go back over your notes from the previous class, um, as well as the reading material. Note anything where you're like, oh, I'm still not quite sure about this. I want them to go over it again. Or and like, this is ambiguous in the textbook. I don't quite get it. And ask me those questions either you know, at the beginning of class or when it's appropriate as we're going through the material. I'll be happy to talk to you about stuff that you don't understand, because chances are there's at least one other person who didn't get it either. Um, look at stuff that I've given back, your homeworks, your quizzes, your labs, um, where I've provided feedback. Make sure you understand that feedback and why you lost points. And I, if you don't quite get it, I'll be happy again to clarify. I've alluded a couple of times to daily quizzes. Um, most of you are familiar with those. Uh, there's going to be a daily reading quiz at the beginning of every class. It'll last for about 10 minutes. Um, covers both the material from the previous class as well as the material from the assigned reading for the day. Um, those are going to last 10 minutes, so if you show up late, you're going to have less time to work on the quiz. That's generally not optimal, so try it as best you can to be on time for class. Um, if you're showing up late really regularly, that is going to reflect itself in your quiz grade, and we don't really want that, um, in addition, of course, to showing up in your attendance. So I will drop your lowest quiz, quiz grade. So if you just happen to like, I don't know, get stuck in the mud and you come to class late, I don't know, I don't know. that's not a good example because that's the case where I'd excuse you. But you know, if you just come to class late and don't say anything and just sit down and start going and you miss the quiz, um, that's going to be a zero for that quiz. Um, but I will drop the lowest quiz grade. So the first time that happens, it just goes away and it doesn't matter. Um, but it does mean that I won't be able to drop another quiz that you were there for but struggled with for some reason. Um, so do your best to be on time for class. 
don't miss the quizzes, um, and that's going to be to your benefit in the long run. In addition to your quizzes, you also have four exams this term. You're going to have three non-cumulative midterms on uh, major course module topics, and then a cumulative final exam that I'll administer on the very last scheduled day of class. Um, so these are all closed book, but you do get a formula sheet. Um, again, if you had me before, you're familiar with the formula sheet. It's just going to keep getting longer. Um, you're allowed a calculator if you want it. You can bring your own. You can use one of mine. Um, these are closed book exams, however. Um, so again, if you had me in 111, we tried something a little different with the final exam. It did not necessarily have the effect I was hoping for. Um, so closed book exams. The course has seven labs over the course of the semester, which works out to be about one lab every other week on average. Um, in practice, they're going to clump up a little bit. Um, so there will be times when we'll go a couple weeks without a lab. There'll be other times where it's like, oh, lab this week. Oh, lab next week again. Um, but on average, it's about one every other week. Um, please print out the lab instructions, um, which are available on D2L, and bring them with you to class. Ideally, once you've printed them, read them um, so you have an idea for what you're going to be doing in lab. Um, and you don't have to be constantly reading through the instructions, trying to figure out what's next and understand what you're supposed to be doing. Um, if you know what you're going to be doing and why before the lab starts, you'll be in a much better position uh, to succeed and get the data you need and not struggle and kind of have to beat your head against the wall as you go through the lab. Um, also, quick tip, don't print straight from D2L. Um, prior experience shows that that does not work well. Um, D2L does something um, in the printing process that tends to mess with the formatting of files. So it's much better to download the file from D2L and print locally from the computer um, rather than printing from D2L. So take a few minutes, do that extra step, um, and you'll get a much better result. Um, things will be a lot more readable and not get mangled. Just like your quizzes, um, I will drop your lowest lab grade. If you miss lab for an unexcused absence, that's going to turn into a zero, and that will then be your lowest lab grade. So that's the one that's going to get dropped. Um, so try not to miss labs, and especially try not to miss them for unexcused reasons. Uh, because that is going to hurt you. Uh, there are only seven labs this term, so a zero is going to make a pretty significant difference. That will immediately drop your lab average um, from an A to a B. Like, even if everything else is perfect, your lab average will then be a B if you have a zero folded in there. Um, so again, don't miss lab. In addition to the regular lab worksheets, um, you're also going to be writing a formal lab write-up again this semester. Um, this term we'll be writing up the capacitor lab, which is lab three. Um, it's going to be the same format as the formal lab that you did for 111. Um, so it's going to have an introduction to background material, error analysis, conclusions. Um, lab three comes a lot earlier in the semester than the rolling of a ball lab, um, so you're going to have more time to work on this. Um, we will also have a peer editing workshop um, close to the end of the semester, so you have time to work on your draft and get everything together, and then you'll bring it in, and you can exchange labs with, with some, some probably your usual lab partners. Um, you get some feedback, so hopefully you'll be able to produce a more polished and more complete final product. Um, and that is going to be due on the last day of class, um, so not the final, but the day before. And finally, um, the last recurring bit of course content is the homework assignments. Um, this course has 11 homeworks. Um, they're going to be due most weeks. Um, there are a couple of weeks where, oh, there's a midterm on Monday, so no homework due that day or something like that. Um, so there's 11 homework assignments. I'll drop the lowest one, so there's going to be 10 that will contribute to your overall course grade. I encourage you to collaborate with one another as you work through your homeworks, but remember that you must submit your own individual work. Um, do not use homework help sites. Um, I have found over the years that things like 
course hero or Chegg or whatever tend to do more harm than good. Um, it will patch over things that you don't understand and not help you get feedback, which is really what the homeworks are for. Um, homework is found in D2L. Um, each module is going to have a homework folder where you can find the homework assignment for that particular week. Um, those are going to be due on Mondays. Um, so if there is homework during a particular week, it's going to be due on Monday. And then if there's no class on Monday, then there's no homework that week. Um, it's kind of how it's going to work. Um, again, this should be familiar for most of you having taken 111. So if you're struggling, get help. Um, so I definitely recommend that you, once you kind of like get to know your classmates a little bit, you know, after the first lab or something, exchange contact information so you can talk to one another about the lab or you can collaborate on homework. You may even want to form formal study groups, which is great. Um, I encourage all of that. In addition to um, talking to one another and helping each other out and learning by teaching, um, you can also talk to me. Um, I have uh, office hours five days a week, um, so you can come and talk to me then. You can make appointments outside office hours if my formal scheduled ones don't work for you. And there is also tutoring available um, through the science department in the innovation lab. Um, so all of those are good resources that are available to you, and I encourage you um, to avail yourself of them. And if you find that you're struggling, get help earlier rather than later. Um, because this course, like 111, builds on itself. And so if you have a hard time understanding electric fields, you're also going to have a hard time with magnetic fields. Um, so it's best to get help sooner. As in 111, I'll continue to accept late work. Um, so anything that is late, you can submit to me up to seven uh, calendar days, uh, one week, after the established deadline, um, there is a lateness penalty of 10% per business day. Um, so if you turn in something one week late, you'll get half credit for that. At the end of that one week grace period, then I will provide um, answers and feedback. So at that point, since the answers are out there, um, I will stop accepting late assignments. Um, so please do your best to get things turned in um, on time. But if you can't, you do have a week to um, finish it up and get it to me as soon as possible. If we're coming to the end of the semester and like that last homework assignment right before the end of term, um, you're not going to have the full week for that. Um, so you have to get me all late work by the end of the final exam. Um, so, well, no. A little past the end of the final exam. Close of business, 5 p.m. on the last day of class. I have to have all late work by then because I need time to grade stuff. <laughs> um, so after that, I will not be accepting late work uh, because I do need to get everybody's grades together and I don't have a lot of time to do that if I'm also trying to like read late labs and stuff. Um, so all late work due by the uh, 5 p.m. on the day of the final. Okay, so that's it for course-specific policies. Now let's now start expanding a little bit and look at stuff that applies more generally across CCA. Um, CCA, like all colleges and universities and big businesses, has to conform to the Americans with Disabilities Act, and one of the things means that we have to provide reasonable accommodations for students with registered disabilities. Um, so if you have a registered disability that entitles you to an accommodation, uh, please let me know as soon as possible especially if the nature of your disability means that you need a classroom accommodation. Um, for example, if you have a hearing difficulty and you need me to wear an, uh, a wireless microphone so that you can hear me better, that's the sort of thing you need to tell me ASAP. Um, and if, as we're going through this semester, something's not working, talk to me about it. Um, this is going to be a dialogue between me and you to find the best way that I can help you um, succeed in class and to do my best to support you and your disability. Um, so if something's not working, let me know and I'll change. Okay. On a completely unrelated note, um, please leave your phones in your bag. So it doesn't have to be in a bag, it could be in a pocket or whatever. Just keep your phones put away during class. 
Um, we all have these sophisticated uh, distraction devices, which can be really addictive, that we carry around everywhere that are called mobile telephones. Um, I certainly sympathize if, you know, you're texting with a friend or you're scrolling Instagram and seeing these amazing mountain pictures or whatever, and then class starts and you're like, I don't really want to listen to class. I'd much rather keep going on Instagram. Um, so try and keep your phones put away. Uh, just make sure to make sure that your brain stays in physics and not in whatever cool thing is on your phone. Um, you'll do better. You'll learn the material better if you can remain focused while you're in class. I know that's not always fun, um, but that does tend to lead to better learning outcomes. So please try and keep your phones put away. Um, in addition, I do allow laptops and tablets. Um, a lot of students like to use laptops to look at lecture slides or tablets to like make notes. All of that's fine. Just make sure you're using it for course purposes. And please silence your devices. Pretty please with sugar on top. Um, you know, if your phone goes off in the middle of class, it's not the end of the world. I might look at you for a second, but then like just try and keep things on silence so you don't distract me, you don't distract yourself, and you don't distract your classmates. Um, so I'm not going to get angry or lose my temper or anything. Just please do your best to keep things on silent. Okay. And then finally, let me finish with the academic integrity policy. This is the part I like talking about least, so I always save it to last. Um, academic dishonesty of any type is prohibited in the Colorado Community College system. That's CCA, but also Front Range and DCC and a bunch of other places. Um, academic dishonesty includes some obvious things like cheating on an exam, as well as some less obvious things like plagiarism or the one that everybody always forgets, which is helping another student do something dishonest. Um, and all of those are subject to sanction in comportment with CCA's academic integrity policy. Uh, by far, the most common issue that I run across is plagiarism, which is what happens if you present another person's words or ideas as if they were your own. Um, so that in, can include copying and pasting from source material, replacing some words in someone else's sentence, paraphrasing from a book or a website without attribution. All of those are examples of plagiarism and all are forbidden. Um, so you should not be quoting directly from any source for any assignment that you will submit for my class. Um, that includes labs, homeworks, your formal lab, all of those things should be written in your own words. Um, the exception to this is your own class notes. Um, you're allowed to quote from your own class notes exact, exactly as much as you want because you wrote those. Um, as you're collaborating with one another um, on homeworks or labs or whatever, please take care um, to avoid plagiarism. If you and a collaborator submit exactly the same words for the same assignment, that does technically constitute plagiarism. Um, and so you should avoid that. So work through, find the answers together, and then write your own words. Um, I'm not going to get too, too picky about that, especially as regards to labs, but do your best to be writing things in your own words. Um, if I see that two people submit exactly the same lab, that's definitely going to be a problem. Um, so try to write things in your own words. Uh, this is an example of where somebody tried to use a homework help site in my astronomy class a while back um, and got into some trouble for it. Uh, this person didn't know or couldn't find uh, the answer to the cause for a core collapse supernova, so they went on the internet, found the answer on a homework help site, and uh, copied, and, copied and pasted that text, or actually probably just retyped it, given the presence of some typos, into their own homework and then submitted it to me. And my brain went, Mm hmm, something is fishy here. Um, so normally when this happens, I can kind of tell. Um, so try to avoid, well, no, don't try. Avoid uh, plagiarism. Don't use homework help sites. They often do more harm than good. Um, I've said that before. I'll say it again. Stay away from homework help sites, and you will ultimately learn better and hopefully uh, thank me in the end. Um, if I suspect that a violation has occurred, I'm required to report it. Um, so there's a whole policy and procedure uh, for how this works. If 
I ever get to that point with any of you, which I hope I don't. Um, so briefly, what will happen is that I will invite you to come have a conversation with me, and then um, based on my conversation with that student, I will work out what an appropriate penalty is. Um, at a minimum, you're going to have to redo the assignment. Um, so this, again, is a little different from previously, as um, I've got more experience with how these things work at CCA. I've relaxed my policy a little bit. Um, but at the very least, you'll have to review... Let me say this another way. At the very least, a student um, who I find is engaged in a violation and that that finding is supported, that student will have to redo the assignment in question with a reduced grade. So it might go from an A to a B would be the maximum, or a B to C would be the maximum, or something like that. Um, serious violations like submitting an entire formal lab that somebody else wrote for a student or repeated violations of the same policy, that's going to incur more serious penalties up to possibly including a failing grade for the course. Um, that's the maximum penalty I can impose. And other under extreme circumstances, um, the college can also impose additional penalties and that can go as far as expulsion. Um, I've never had to do that. Um, I've never even had to fail a student for a whole semester. Um, so I don't, I hope I never have to. Um, but it's important at the outset to set out these policies so that everybody's on the same page and kind of knows what to expect. So again, I hope this never becomes an issue. It's kind of a down, bummer of a down note to end things on. Um, so I will say uh, thank you all for watching this, especially knowing that a lot of it is going to be familiar to you, uh, to most of you. Um, I'm looking forward to this semester. e &M is really fun. Um, we get to play around with circuits and magnets and stuff. Um, so I'm looking forward to this term, and I hope all of you are as well. I will see you in class, not this week, uh, but during the second week of term when we all get back in person. And before that, I'll see you on Zoom. Thanks for watching.